Hello brothers and sisters in Christ, make sure you get your King James Bibles out and follow along. It's King James, I'm a King James Bible believer and I, if you're truly following me, not me, be followers of me if I am of Christ, <laughs> make sure you have your King James Bibles out. All right. So how did Paul deal with the belief that Jesus was not God the Father? How did Paul deal with people when he tried preaching truth to them and they didn't want the truth? Now turn to Acts chapter 17, verse 14. And then immediately the brethren sent away Paul to go as it were to the sea, but Silas and Timotheus abode there still. Verse 15. And they that conducted Paul brought him unto Athens, and received, and receiving a commandment unto Silas and Timotheus for to come to him with all speed, they departed. Now while Paul was waiting for them at Athens... His spirit stirred within him. We're going to find out why. Stirred within him. When he saw the city wholly given to idolatry. Idols. Verse 17. Therefore disputed he in the synagogue with the Jews and with the devout persons and in the market daily with them that met with him. Remember, a person has a body, soul, and spirit. There we see another example, just a side note, another example of person be in reference to somebody who has a body, soul, and spirit. Every time in the King James Bible. Verse 18. Then certain philosophers of the Epicureans and of the Stoics encountered him, and some said, What will this babbler say? <laughs> okay, you're going to get that a lot, brothers and sisters of Christ. You're going to get that before you even get any words out. They're going to call you names. What is this babbler going to say? Oh, he's part of an occult. Should we even listen to him? And just all kinds of things. They didn't even listen to him. Just what would this babbler say? Other some, he seemed to be a setter forth of strange gods. Okay? Paul had barely got, got some stuff out with the Jews, but when it talks about the certain philosophers that encountered him, that's their attitude. All right? But it says here, he seemed to be setter forth of strange gods. Lowercase g, gods. Because he preached unto them, Jesus, one, and the resurrection. Now, if you follow along with Paul in the Pauline epistles, he preaches uh, God the Father. And that's how he greets people. Grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. My love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. He uses that as a greeting and he uses that as a salutation. Okay? He preaches God the Father, Jesus the capital S Son of God the Father, and the Spirit of God the Father, the Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. So he's preaching Jesus to them, but they say God's plural. Why? Because he's speaking about God the Father and Jesus Christ. And they think it's two gods. But let's keep going. Verse 19. And they took him and brought him unto Aragopis. Aroga, Ar, I want to say Aropagopis. I can't even pronounce that. Pegas however you want to pronounce it, saying, May we know what this new doctrine whereof thou speaketh is, for thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. And he's going to talk about the Godhead. He's talked about it in other passages. For in him dwelt the fullness of the Godhead bodily. If he's teaching Jesus Christ, the person of the Godhead, it seems like it's singular, but there's body, soul, and spirit. And they're thinking it's three separate gods. Kind of like the pagan trinity. It's no longer Son of God, it's God the Son. It's no longer the Spirit of God, it's God the Spirit. Three separate gods. No connection. Other than they all can claim title, capital G, God. No. Sorry, that's not what the Bible teaches. Verse 20. For thou bringest certain strange things to our ears. We would know, therefore, what these things mean. Verse 21. For all the Athenians and strangers which were there spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or hear some new thing. A little side note, brothers, uh, mainly to brothers in Christ that are in ministry and they're preaching and teaching. Don't feel like you always got to preach something new, new, new. I got to have something new. I got we got to hear this new thing. Okay, you'll have you have plenty to preach and teach with the major doctrines, instruction, and righteousness, 
the true plan of salvation and the Bible version issue. Okay, God's word, this is God's word and how it gets profaned, it gets screwed up, they're adding to, they're subtracting from, they're trying to turn the truth of God into a lie. They're trying to change God's word. Okay, and if you feel like, the, I think the dangers, this is a side note, I apologize brethren, it's got to get off my heart. To the brethren that are in ministry, one of the dangers we have in ministry today is this camera that I'm looking into right now. Technology. We can record a teaching and put it out there and people can watch that one teaching over and over. I watch Bible teachings over and over and over. And the problem is, is we get complacent and say, okay, I've already done a Bible teaching on it. I don't have to do any more teachings on it. Well, uh, pre-time of Jacob's Trouble, Catch Away the Body of Christ. Well, I've already done 200 videos. I don't need to do any more. Uh, yeah, you do. You need to keep preaching it. Even if you're preaching the same study you did 10 years ago, you re-preach it on a new video. You need to keep preaching the things that are good and true. Okay, don't fall into the trap that you have to preach something new. I've got to preach something new. I've got to change my whole ministry to do something else because I need something new, 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 new. Be very careful. What happened? They got it. They were given totally to idolatry, and we'll find out later. They're worshiping the unknown God. And it's all about hearing something new. They want to hear something new and fascinating so they can pass it around. Oh, I've heard that story a million times. I'm, I, I don't need to hear it again. I want to hear something new. Okay, we need to be going through the plan of salvation. Even though you're saved, we still need to go through it every so often. Same thing with all the major doctrines. That's why the Bible says, Hiding God's word in your heart. Thy, God, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. When we go over the major doctrines, when we go over... The plan of salvation, when we go over the instruction and righteousness, that helps us keep our eyes on Jesus Christ and keep us focused in our life so we can sin as little as possible until he calls us home, whether it's through death or the catching away of the body of Christ. Don't fall for the trap that you have to. I just have to come out with something new. Don't become a salesman. That's the whole point of this study. What was Paul, what's Paul's reaction to somebody who doesn't want the truth when it comes to Jesus Christ is God fully and completely. God the Father is the soul and Jesus is the body of God the Father, the soul. He's the body for the soul. The soul is in him. They connected. They are one. That's the whole point of this. We are not salesmen. We don't have to come up with a new angle every time to try to sell things. I mean, it's just got, you want to see something getting so outrageous, look at Chick Publications and how many go different gospel tracts they have. Talk about being a salesman. We're not supposed to be salesmen. The gospel is not that difficult regardless where you come from. I understand tailoring a little bit of gospel tracts for certain false religions when you're taught a false Jesus, but how many gospel tracts do we really need? I only have one that I hand out to everybody regardless what false religion you're in. Okay. But the thing is, is it gets to the point where I've got to have something new. I got to, like, We're not salesmen. Don't fall into that trap. As we're going to read here, Paul's not a salesman. He has the right attitude. Verse 22. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill and said, Ye men of Athens, I perceive that in all things ye are superstitious. Too superstitious. For as I passed by and beheld your devotions, I found an altar with the inscription to the unknown God. Stop there for a second. Whom therefore you ignorantly worship, we'll keep going for that. Whom therefore ye ignorantly worship, him declare I unto you. Why was his heart, uh, why was his spirit stirred within him when he saw the city given holy to idolatry? What stirs the heart in a Bible believing, God fearing man or woman is when you come across somebody who professes to be a Bible believer or a Christian, period, not a Bible believer, but a Christian. I follow Christ. And they have no clue of the real God, capital G God, the Father, which is in Jesus Christ, connected to Jesus Christ, which is Jesus Christ, they have no clue who the real Jesus Christ is. And our spirit stirs from within us. What's going on here? If it's just someone who's flat out lost, has an atheist, it doesn't stir my spirit as much. I try to tell them about Jesus, but they don't want him, they don't want him. What really stirs my spirit is when you get around people that you know that some of them might have a love of the truth, and they, as we're going to get ahead of them, I'm getting ahead of myself, seeking after the Lord, 
But you get people who profess to be like you. I'm one of you. I'm a Christian. I believe in the one true God, singular. Only to them, it was the unknown God. Of course your spirit's going to stir within you. Verse 24. God that made the world and all the things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth. Remember what 1 Corinthians 8, 6 said? There's only put one capital G, God the Father. And only one capital L, Lord, Jesus Christ. What did we just read there? That passage right there just said, it's Paul saying that God the Father is Jesus Christ. They're one and the same. Look, let's read it again. Verse 24. God, talking about God the Father, that made the world and all the things therein, seeing that he is Lord of heaven and earth. Lord of heaven and earth. Jesus is Lord of lords. Capital L, Lord of lowercase l, lords. He's talking about Jesus Christ. How do we know? Well, you turn to other passages, it says that Jesus, by him all things consist. He created all things. Jesus Christ did. But here it's saying God the Father created all things. But choosing a title, a name that's supposed to be for Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, they didn't know about Jesus Christ. In the Old Testament, they called God the Father, Lord. Capital L, Lord. One true God. The Godhead was not revealed to them then. Okay? But Lord is a reference to Jesus Christ, who is God the Father. Let's keep going. Dwelt not in temples made with hands, neither is worshipped with men's hands, as though he needed anything, seeing he giveth to all life, and breath and all things. All right. And hath made of one blood all nations of men for to dwell on the face of the earth and hath determined the times before appointed and the bounds of their habitation. That they should seek the Lord. 1 Corinthians 8, 6 again. There's only one capital L Lord. Who is it? Jesus Christ. They may seek the Lord. If happily they might feel after him and find him, though he be not far from every one of us. Jesus, Bob talks about how Jesus is the door. And he also talks about how he stands at the door and knocks. He's there for anybody who wants him. If you're seeking the Lord, which is Jesus Christ, who is God fully and completely, God manifests in the flesh, the body of God the Father. If you're truly seeking him, you will find him. Because he's not far from every one of us. Verse 28. For in him we live and move and have our being. As certain also of your own poets have said. For we are also his offspring. We're made in the likeness of God. Go back to uh, uh, Genesis chapter 1 and 2. We're made in the likeness of God. Okay. People get on me because I say Adam was made in the image of God. And Adam and Eve were made in the likeness of God. Okay, image is something you physically see. i got to go over this again. Image is something that you physically see. It's talking about the body only. Why? Because we know in body, soul, spirit, what of those three things can we see? We can see the body. Who's the image of the invisible God? Jesus Christ, because he's the body of the Godhead. Okay, we're made in his likeness. Now, when it comes to body, when it comes to that image part, Adam was made in the image of God. We're made in the image of Adam. Okay, we're in a fallen state. We're born into a world of sin. Okay? Adam was created perfect. Okay? But the whole point of that is Adam's a man, God is a man. The man, Christ Jesus. He's not unisex. He's not male and or man and woman and that junk. Okay? That's why it said image. That's talking about the body, physical. So if you don't hear me say image, it's because the Bible says image, created he him, likeness, created he man and woman. You have to read that whole passage. It does a distinction between how he created Adam when it comes to image, how he created Adam and Eve when it comes to likeness. There's a distinction. Okay, But we read there his offspring. Verse 29, For as much then are we the offspring of God... We're created in, in the likeness of God, body, soul, and spirit. So God has a body, soul, and spirit. We ought not to think that the Godhead, body, soul, and spirit, is like unto gold or silver or stone graven by art and man's devices. I always stop there to give it one more 
push to the brothers of Christ, be careful and stay away from drawings of Jesus Christ. What's the big deal? I pre preach this in other videos when it comes to idols and stuff. The true image of the Godhead. What is the true image of the Godhead? Who is the image of the invisible God? We already said it. Who's the image of the visible God? Jesus Christ. What part of the Godhead can you see? Jesus Christ, the body. Okay? You can't see the soul and you can't see the spirit. So, when it's saying that it's likened to Im any images graven by art or man's devices, the one true image of the Godhead is Jesus Christ, but we're still con it's still condemned to draw images of Jesus Christ in Scripture. Everyone that's ever drawn, I believe everyone that's drawn a Jesus Christ, it's been a false Christ. Period. Well, well they're, they mean well and they're trying. It doesn't matter. We don't know what Jesus looks like. And if you keep drawing pictures, people are going to get this image in their head and saying, that's what Jesus is supposed to look like. This long-haired hippie. Feminine. Not really masculine and a man. He's just feminine with long hair. Okay? Be careful about that. Verse 30. And the times of this ignorant God winked at, but now commendeth all men everywhere to repent, because he had appointed a day in which he will... Judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath ordained. Remember, judgment seat of Christ, great white throne judgment. Jesus is judging everybody. We all, whether you're saved or lost, have to answer to Jesus Christ. If you're saved, you get to answer to him at the judgment seat of Christ, and you're not going to go to hell. If you're lost and die in your sins, you're going to have to answer to Jesus Christ at the great white throne, and you will get tossed into the lake of fire because it says death and hell were given up so either you're going to die and go to hell now and have to spend some time in hell before you have to stand before Jesus Christ the judgment and then get tossed in the lake of fire to burn for all eternity but regardless you're going to, we're all going to be judged by that man whom he hath ordained and that man is Jesus Christ whereof he hath given assurance unto all men and that he hath raised him from the dead now wait right here. Raised him from the dead. We're going to read further. This starts making people upset. What's so big deal about this resurrection? We've talked about it, brothers and sisters in Christ. We've talked about it time and time again. No changed life gospel, no resurrection gospel. You have people that will say, head knowledge, will say, I believe in the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But down here they hate and don't believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ with the life that they live. There's no resurrection. The old man is supposed to be dead and buried with Christ. The new man comes up. I belong to you, Lord. My life is yours, Lord. You command me. I obey. He comes into your life through the word of God. He gives you the Holy Spirit and says, Okay, now get that out of your life. Get that out of your life. Stop doing this. Start doing this. Uh, you're going to go through some hard times. You're going to be persecuted. You're going to be laughed at. Okay, there's a change in your life, and don't think people are that stupid. Because people, because people try to give me. I don't believe people are that stupid. I think the people that really re that profess to be saved, I worship the unknown God, singular. They're given totally, controlly to idolatry. The false belief that you can be a Christian and have the world. They know that if they believe in the real Jesus Christ that comes into their life and it becomes Lord of their life. They know there's going to be a change. They know they're going to have to be separate from the world. They know that they have to give up sin. They know they're going to have to go through hardship. And they don't want it. So the moment you hear resurrection, back then there wasn't as deception as it is today about all these Christians, all these different types of Christians. No, there's only one type of Christian back then. Okay? You had people coming in that were false brethren, but I'm talking about today, you got so many different denominations, Jehovah's Witness, Mormons, Catholics, on and on, all these things. Oh, we're all Christians. Paul, when Paul mentioned resurrection, people are like, oh, he's talking about a changed life, a new man, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Oh, we don't want anything to do with that. As we're going to get on, continue here. He says, hath raised him from the dead, verse 32, and when they heard of the resurrection of the dead, you're going to get three, hold your finger there, there's three reactions you're going to get when you preach in truth. 
But what but the main part to focus on, brothers and sisters Christ, is what was Paul's reaction to people who didn't want the truth. But when they heard the resurrection of the dead, some mocked. That's the first group you're gonna get. You're gonna get people that make fun of you, call you names, try to bring you down, tear you down. Why? They don't want to change life. They don't want Jesus being capital L, Lord of their life. See, if they're worshiping an unknown God, then they can be the Lord of their life. They can say what's right and wrong. They can say what Bible version they want to use. And even if they do use a King James Bible, they still try to play Lord of their own life. And they decide what they want to follow and what they don't want to follow. As long as it's an unknown God... They can, do, they can do whatever they want. But the moment he's made known, he's Lord. He talks about back there that if you seek the Lord, that they should seek the Lord if happily they may feel after him. If you're seeking the capital L Lord, a Lord to be Lord of your life, you have to start obeying him. You, start have, you have to start obeying his word. They'll start mocking you because they don't want that. What about the other group? And the other said, we will hear thee again of this matter. They're the ones that are nice about it. Well, it sounds good. You sound good, but you know, uh, I'll, maybe I'll hear about it later. Well, I'm not really ready for that kind of a life right now. Well, that might sound good for you, but it's just not really good for me. But, you know, I might hear about it again. Both of these first two groups, aren't, they're, not listen, they're not taking in the truth. Remember that. You've got people that say, well, that sounds good, and they'll nod their head. Yeah, well, I'll have to think about that. Very few of them actually go walk away thinking about it. It's just them being nice. Right? But what's Paul's reaction to these first two groups? Verse 33, so Paul departed from among them. No, Paul, we're supposed to be car salesmen. you got to get in their face until you force them to believe. And the the capital L Lord, the Godhead of the King James Bible, body, soul, and spirit, one person of the Godhead, the capital S Son of God, and the Spirit, capital S Spirit of God, and God the Father, which is the soul. You gotta force him, you gotta shove it down. No, what's his response? So Paul departed from among them. You don't want the truth? Fine. I poured out my heart to you, I gave you truth. You want it? Fine. You don't want it? I'm gone. What's the third group that's going to be reaction? Verse 34. Howbeit certain men clave unto him and believed, among the which was Dionysus the Aragopite, Areopagite, if I can say it right, and a woman named Demarius and others with him. They believed and they followed him. They says certain men clave unto him and believe. Those are the three reactions you're going to get, brothers and sisters of Christ. You say, what, what's the big deal of doing this study? I'm seeing brethren that get drawn, that get deceived, and to drawn into um, debates, arguing, fighting amongst the brethren with people that just reject the true Jesus Christ of Scripture. What was Paul's reaction? If they don't want the truth, Walk away. First right. Corinthians 11, 1 Corinthians 11.1 says, Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. If this is the first video you watch, then I'll, I'm going to do another one saying, What was Jesus' reaction to people who didn't believe he was God the Father? That they were one. Okay? But he says, Be ye followers even of me, as I am of Christ. Paul treated people this way by saying, If you don't want the truth, fine. I'm going to people who do. I'm going to let you alone, and I'm going to go to people who do. Where do you get that from? Jesus Christ. So, first, uh, turn to John 8, 47. When you're talking to professing Christians, because that's usually who we talk to about the Godhead, because when someone's newly saved, born again, and we show them the King James Bible, they get a King James Bible, we start showing them truth, it's not that big of a deal. What we're dealing with is people that might have been a false convert, like me, for most of my life and got saved and I was lied to. And I used the Trinity terms and stuff like that, but 
I was too busy having fun. But there's some people that are really hardcore religious people in these false Babel buildings with Bible perversions and everything that truly get saved and born again. Pardon me. And God brings them out of that false system. And now God's got to tear them all the way back down and start rebuilding from the beginning because they've got so much false junk in their head, lies and deception that they were told and taught. They got to, God's got to work with them. Okay? But when you're talking to someone who professes to be saved and you say, okay, capital T Trinity, not a title for God. God the Son, not in Scripture. Why? Because it makes Jesus out to be separate from the Father and He's His own God. That's why there's no no term God the Son in Scripture or God the Holy Spirit. In other words, it's not the Spirit of God, it's God the Spirit. They're two contradicting statements. They're not the same thing. You'll hear him say, well, I believe it's the Spirit of God and God the Spirit. You can't. What does the Bible say about a double-minded man that's unstable in all his ways? They're unstable. Mentally ill. Now, some people can be ignorant. When you're talking to someone's ignorant, What's their reaction when you tell them the truth? John 8, 47. He that is of God heareth God's words. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. I didn't say man's opinions. Or he did, the Bible doesn't say man's opinions. He that heareth man's opinions, feelings, what the world thinks. No. What does it say? He that is of God heareth God's words. Capital T, Trinity for God. Can you show me in Scripture? No, then it's not God's Word. God the Son, can you show me that in Scripture? No, it's not God's Word. I mean, to someone who's truly saved, that's all it should take. You're right, it's not in God's Word. But when they get to the attitude and try to come up with all these excuses and blah, 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 what are you supposed to do? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to let them alone. What did Paul do? So Paul departed from among them. Fine, go over there and have your pagan trinity. I don't want to have anything to do with you or your pagan trinity. I preached the truth. I planted a seed. Maybe someone else will come along and water. That's the attitude we need to have. Don't fall into the debating and arguing. 1 Thessalonians 2.13 For this cause also thank we God without ceasing, because when you received the word of God, which you heard of us, you received it not as the word of men, which that's what trinity is, the word of men. That's what God the Son is, the word of men. That's what... God the Holy Spirit is, it's the word of men. God in three persons, it's the word of men. Where is it at in scripture? Four times uh, the body of the Godhead is referred to as a person and it's Jesus Christ. He's the only person of the Godhead. He's got God the Father in him as the soul and the Spirit of God in him, which is why he's a person. You received it not as the word of men, but as it is in truth, the word of God, which effectually worketh also in you that believe. I'm starting to realize that people who really stand for the Trinity, you'll start finding out that there are all kinds of messed up when it comes to Scripture. At first, you didn't really notice, but this big, I mean, even with some of the different ministries I used to follow, it was like, they seemed good, they seemed great, it was awesome. Then when this whole... Godhead came out, okay, are you going to believe the Godhead or the Trinity? They held closely, firmly to the Trinity, and you realize how they don't, they really hate the Godhead of the King James Bible. And you start looking back and go, wait a second, how did I miss that? They're off here? How did I miss that over there? They're off. You'll find out they're off on a lot of things when they vehemently stand for the pagan Trinity. You'll be shocked. Why? Because they're not believing in the Word of God. I don't know how many times I can say it. How could you turn your back on the Word of God for a pagan title for God that's not in Scripture and then claim and call yourself a Bible believer? Simple. You're a liar. You're a fraud. You're a fake. You're lying. You're not a Bible believer. You're a Bible doubter. You're a Bible corrector. Matthew 15, 14 reads, let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into a ditch. That's our attitude. Let them alone. Luke 16, 15 says, And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourself before men. I see that a lot with these uh, hardcore Trinitarians. 
they are, ye are they which justify yourself before men. What we just read there, it's not the words of men, but these people that justify themselves before men, it's all about men's words. They turn their back on God's word in a heartbeat. But God knoweth your heart, for that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Is absolute truth highly esteemed among men today? I mean, especially today with what's going on out there in the world? No. It's an abomination. So when we sit there and preach and say, hey, this Trinity thing that's so popular among all false religions, it's an abomination in the sight of God. Let me show you the real Jesus Christ, the Lord, capital L, Lord Jesus Christ, who is come, who is the I Am. He's the Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. He's the Alpha and Omega. Let me show you the real Jesus Christ, the Scripture. If they want the truth, give it to them through the Word of God. Be careful not to start falling in the trap of always using your own words and language because then you'll start adding to the Word of God. Make sure your language lines up with the Word of God. If they don't want the truth, let them alone. Why? They'd be blind leaders of the blind. You tried preaching the truth. Paul tried preaching the truth. He departed from them. I'm done. And he moved on. So, brothers and sisters of Christ, i got a couple more teachings to get out today. So, I want to say grace and peace from God our Father and our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. My love for you, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Um, remember, we're not car salesmen. Okay? We just preach truth. If they want it, give it to them. If they don't want it, move on and find someone who does. Thank you for watching.